Peace and blessings, people. So today we're going to talk about how do we heal the gut, and I'm going to give you seven ways on how you can heal the gut naturally. And the reason why this conversation is so important is because the number one reason why people are typically going into the hospitals or going to the doctor is because of gut issues or digestive issues, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcers, ulcerative colitis, uh, acid reflux, the list goes on and on. And so a lot of our health issues stem from our gut. High blood pressure quite often stems from the gut. Cardiovascular disease stems from the gut. A lot of our major issues stem from the gut. So this is why this conversation is so important is because we're getting to the cause of disease instead of just the symptoms. Okay, so I'm going to break down. First, I'm going to go over a few things that give you the signs and symptoms as to you do have an unhealthy gut. And then that way you can identify that some of the issues that you don't necessarily correlate to having a gut issue, it may be you. And then the other thing we're gonna jump into is some of those natural ways that you can actually heal it. So let's get started. Now let's first start with the idea of the philosophy around healing the gut and why it's so important is because that is where health not only begins, but it's also where it ends too. And what I mean by that is a healthy gut leads to a healthy life, an unhealthy gut leads to a very short life, okay? We've all heard these sayings around the gut or what you eat and how important food is, and not, not only food, but your digestive health. Uh, things around food is medicine, uh, you are what you eat, um, I got a gut intuition, um, food creates your mood, all of these things sort of tell us how important the gut is, especially to the health equation. Now, let me take that a step further. Most people, when they think about the gut, they don't think about the gut in terms of like, first of all, how important it is to our health, but also most people don't know that the gut is also called the second brain, okay? The second brain. And the reason why it's called the second brain is because it has its own ner nervous system. And that nervous system is called the enteric nervous system. And it has some of the same neurochemicals or neurotransmitters in the same cells that the brain actually use. Okay? So that tells you, first of all, the gut isn't just digesting food. It's doing far more than that. And the other thing that's really important that it labels is, is that there's a gut-brain connection as well, too. Having those similar cells and similar neurotransmitters. Okay? Now... One of the statistics that I found very interesting was that 50 to 90% of patients with irritable bowel syndrome also experience anxiety and depression. Okay, so it shows us how closely related the gut and the brain are related. And that's really important because a lot of those neurotransmitters that keep us happy, that keep us balanced, like serotonin, 90% of it is made in the gut. OK, so it's not only important to our digestive health, it's also important to our cognitive health as well, too. So let's jump into some of those things or signs and symptoms that could indicate that you have an unhealthy gut, that you're not, probably not, you know, associating with the fact that my gut is unhealthy and I need to really do something about it and not only do something about my gut, but this could actually address the cause and issue for maybe my hypertension, my diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so number one, a foul smelling bowel movement, a foul smelling bowel movement. Your, your bowel movements aren't supposed to smell so bad that you got to spray, shut the door and no one can go in there for 45 minutes. So that's an indication that you have digestive issues because the food is taking a long time to transit, which means that it's rotting and fermenting. And that's what's creating the smell or quite possibly you have so many um, bad bugs as opposed to good bacteria in the stomach, that they're creating their own toxins that also creates the smell, okay? So foul smelling bowel movements, okay? Number two, migraines. Especially if you're having some nausea and vomiting, that could also be an indication that you have an unhealthy gut as well too. New food allergies, like these allergies you didn't have in the past, you could eat the food, you had no problem, then all of a sudden you have all of these new food allergies. It could be a sign and symptom that you have an unhealthy gut as well too. Sleep problems, okay? Sleep problems could also be a sign and symptom that you have an unhealthy gut where you're waking up in the middle of the night or you go to sleep and you can't stay asleep, 
okay? Also, unintentional weight loss or weight gain, that, especially when you see those fluctuations. That could be a sign and symptom that you have an unhealthy gut. Chronic fatigue where you're tired all the time. Gas and bloating, of course, uh, we associate with a gut issue. But it's really important to understand all of these things that I'm naming, these things are, are a smaller picture to what could be a bigger picture to come. These could also be signs and symptoms that you could eventually develop some sort of colorectal cancer as well. So these are very important. These are like the check engine lights. Also skin irritations or skin blemishes or eczema, um, a lot of acne on the skin. That is a sign and symptom that the gut is trying to push toxicity out because the skin is the largest elimination organ in the body and the body will quite often use it as a pathway to get rid of toxins and to get rid of waste, okay? And most people have between 10 and 25 pounds of undigested food sitting, rotting, and fermenting in their gut. Acid reflux, of course, could be a sign and symptom that you have an un unhealthy gut. It is not only could be, it is a sign and symptom that you have an unhealthy gut as well. And that acid reflux is going to lead to larger problems as well. Okay. Autoimmune conditions. And you're probably thinking, if I got lupus or I got Hashimoto's, how's that connected to the gut? Well, leaky gut syndrome is what is at the foundation of most, most autoimmune conditions. Okay. Constipation or runny stools. Also a sign and symptom that you have an unhealthy gut. Constant colds or infections. And the reason why is because 80%, roughly 80% of our immune system is made and manufactured in our gut, okay? So when you have an unhealthy gut, you're gonna have an unhealthy immune system, which means you're gonna have more infections, more colds. You'll have a cold during the summertime, even when you don't need to have a cold, okay? Also, sugar cravings, sign of an unhealthy gut as well, because you could have parasites, you could have yeast growing in the body. Okay, and those things will say you want sugar. They will control you. They will literally hijack your taste buds, okay? Also, an inability to concentrate because you gotta remember the gut is called the second brain, okay? So it not only affects your digestive health, but food affects your mood as well. So let's jump into some of those seven ways you can start to naturally heal your gut, okay? Now, before we do that, I wanna give you sort of a, overall arching philosophy around healing the gut and a perspective to look at the gut, okay? Don't look at it like a like a trash can, you know, a compactor, okay? Like you're throwing food in there to be broken down and that's all it's for, okay? It's far more complicated than that. The way to look at the gut is look at it like a garden, okay? Like it's in nature, okay? And when you have an unhealthy gut, think of it as a garden, that you left unintended. And as a result, when you came back, nothing was growing anymore because there were weeds everywhere and it hadn't been nourished. It had been, you know, things had been put in, like somebody threw a spare tire in the garden and uh, the garden just wasn't flourishing like it was before. So now you have to become a gardener, you know? So that's how you gotta look at your gut, okay? So the first thing we wanna do when we come back to that garden is we got a weed. We got to get all the things out of the garden that don't actually add life to you. Okay, so we weed the garden first. The next thing we need to do is restore the soil. Okay, we need to make sure the soil is healthy again. The soil in our gut will be our microbiome. And we restore our microbiome with natural prebiotics, which is fiber, and natural probiotics, which you can get from food as well too. Okay, the next thing we need to do is plant good seeds. Okay, good healthy seeds. Good healthy seeds are good healthy foods, foods that cleanse you instead of clog you, okay? The next thing we need to do is stay consistent in maintaining the garden, okay? We want to get good food habits, good habits when it comes to choosing our food, drinking properly, not stressing, getting proper sleep, things of that nature, okay? And then the last thing is we want to harvest the healing, okay? That means that when we feel that healing of the gut, we need to harvest it. And we do that by doing fasting, okay? We do that by doing liquid fast, um, things of that nature. So we wanna harvest the healing to keep it going, okay? Now, here are the seven ways, the seven ways that you can improve your gut health 
and do it naturally, okay? Number one is to eat to live and to cleanse. And what that means is don't eat anything that is going to clog the system. Eat to live means eat everything that is living, okay? If you got a gut issue, you don't wanna eat anything that is dead, okay? You wanna eat vibrant things, which means that you not only need to eat a whole foods plant-based diet, but you, it's really important that you eat majority raw if you can. Now, for the, some of you that are transitioning, you may not be able to eat a lot of raw food initially, but what you do over time is you increase that amount, okay? So eat the live and the cleanse and not the club, okay? Number two is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is when you create a window of time where you're not actually eating, okay? And what that means is I may stop eating at seven and then I may not eat again until 10 a.m. the next day. Okay, which will give me like a, you know, a, a 15 hour window where I'm not eating. Okay, that gives the gut digestive rest. And when the, the gut is able to rest, the good thing about that is when we rest, we restore, we repair, we heal. Okay, so intermittent fasting could be very helpful for you. Number three, increase your fiber and diversity, meaning Fiber is only found in plants, so you want to increase the amount of plants that you're eating, but you also want to eat a diversity of plants, okay? Because you want to get a diversity of nutrients. You want to get a diversity of different types of fiber, insoluble fiber, soluble fiber, etc. okay? Number four, detox the gut. You got to get that waste out of there. I told you, between 10 and 25 pounds of undigested food is just sitting, rotting in your gut because you've been eating food that doesn't have fiber in it. You've been eating food that has preservatives, thickening agents, emulsifiers, dyes, the list goes on and on. That food does not, not only register with what your body is used to having, but that food is also toxic to your gut as well. Okay, so we got to detox the gut. And we do that by using herbs. Herbs were made to detox the body. Even animals out in nature, when they eat something they're not supposed to, they will start eating the grass. They will go find a herb in nature. They're intuitive like that. And we have to get back to that. So detoxing is very important. And if you haven't done my detox, my 14 day or my 28 day detox, that's exactly what the detox is designed to do. To get rid of that 10 to 25 pounds of undigested fecal batter that is rotting and fermenting in your gut, slimming out the waistline, but also we're storing gut health because a lot of herbs that I put in there, which I'll talk about a little bit later, are very, very nutritious for the gut and healing for the gut as well, okay? And number five, get adequate sleep. As I said before, we heal when we rest, okay? And so if you're not resting enough, the body can't heal, restore, repair, okay? So you need to get not only eight hours of sleep, you need to get eight hours of good sleep every night. So you need to be very, very, very restrictive to yourself in terms of like how much sleep you get over this healing period. OK, the next one is going to be stress management, because when we stress, it actually causes our gut to, you know, um, become very unhealthy. OK, everybody has heard like when I'm stressed out, I may get a stomach ulcer. OK, so everybody's heard of that, but it's really important for us to understand that there's other implications, too. So managing stress. And again, I said manage stress. I didn't say be stress free because we live in a stress free world. So it's very difficult to be stress free, but we can properly manage stress by changing our habits, by even meditating and uh, setting up coping mechanisms in place as well. The next one is going to be and uh, I think this is very important is incorporating these five superfoods that are gut healthy, okay? That are superfood gut healthy, okay? And these five foods are going to be mushrooms. Mushrooms are very important because they contain prebiotics. Prebiotics feed probiotics. What are probiotics? Probiotics are the good bacteria in your gut. The good bacteria in your gut is responsible for making 70 to 80% of your immune system, all right? It's also responsible for helping you maintain a healthy weight and so many other things. So incorporating mushrooms into your diet is important because it not only adds that prebiotic, but mushrooms, certain mushrooms are also very medicinal as well too, and they can boost your immune system, okay? Number two, 
CMOS gel. So as you guys know, I have a, a video on this channel where I talked about real versus fake CMOS, okay? And I got so much, um, so many questions about that video and so many people love that video that I started to go out and find CMOS for myself. And we find we found Irish, Irish CMOS in Ireland, okay? Where it comes from, that, which is why it's called Irish CMOS. And so we got a natural, healthy, um, naturally harvested sea moss that is really, really healthy for the gut. And again, sea moss is healthy for the gut because it's really high in fiber, but also because it, it forms like a gel in the gut as well, which is anti-inflammatory as well too, okay? Also, one of the herbs that is in my detox, the 14-day and the 28-day, uh, is slippery elm. Slippery elm, when you put it in a tea, it will actually form a gel or create a gel. That gel is very soothing and anti-inflammatory to the gut as well. Number four is going to be a coconut kefir. Now you can make coconut kefir uh, from coconuts, okay? And uh, coconut kefir is really healthy for the gut because it contains something called caprylic acid. Caprylic acid is antifungal. Okay, it's an antifungal fatty acid. And the reason why that's so important is because quite often when you have an unhealthy gut, what that means is you have an unhealthy gut because there's an overgrowth of bad bacteria and fungus. Okay, and this caprylic acid is antifungal. So it will help to get rid of a lot of that unhealthy yeast and candida in the body or in the gut. The other thing that coconut kefir is really good for as well is high in potassium, which is good for the kidneys and the blood pressure. It also hydrates the gut, which is, and it hydrates it with electrolytes, which is also really important. And electrolytes are minerals and your gut needs minerals to run, okay? It needs those to be able to have a lot of those biological actions move through smoothly, okay? And then the other thing that's really good about coconut kefir is it, it contains a cytokine called kinetin, okay? Kinetin is really good because it's anti-aging. So it makes the gut younger and makes you younger as a result of that, okay? And the last food, superfood that I'll tell you that's really important, and most people know about it, but most people don't like onions. Onions are really good because they contain something called inulin. Inulin is a prebiotic, and remember, prebiotics feed probiotics, and probiotics are good bacteria in the gut, okay? So they build up the gut flora inside of there, the good bacteria inside of your gut. And so those are my five superfoods. Those are my seven ways that you can heal the gut naturally. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, like, and share, and comment below what video you want to see next. Until the next time, peace and blessings, and Godspeed.